live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you tuning in here. Whatever platform you are on, thanks for doing so. But I do recommend the Fox 12 Oregon app, and whether you're watching live or after the fact, uh, either way, great to have you here. And feel free to share these segments right now. We are talking about something that's a lot of people have been talking about this week, and that is a swarm of earthquakes that have been happening on Mount Rainier. They started a few days ago, and uh, of course, uh, the people at the USGS, at the Cascades Volcano Observatories, they've been, they've been monitoring this and uh, following along with what's been happening with it and keeping us up to date. And we started talking about this a few days ago. We've got her back right now. We've got Alex here with us uh, for an update on these earthquakes and what's been going on. And thanks, you know, as always, for being here. I uh, really appreciate you uh, joining the show. And, uh, you know, a few days ago, you mentioned if it goes past three days, then that would kind of change some of the outlook. So I guess... Right now here on Friday, July 11th, um, where are we at with this swarm of earthquakes on Mount Rainier? Awesome. Thanks for having me, Greg. Uh, yeah, so we had a swarm of earthquakes, for those who haven't actually heard, uh, starting about 1.30 a.m. local time on Tuesday. And so we're a couple days into the swarm now, and we're still continuing. Um, the first day, we had event rates of up to maybe 30 events per hour that were being located by our, our analyses. Um, and now for the past couple of days, we've been, it's been waxing and waning a little bit, um, but generally under about a, a few events per hour. Um, so it's still chugging along. It's still above background activity, um, but it's not as high of rates uh, that we were seeing on the first day. Is that of any concern, the fact that it has continued, even if that it is at a lower rate? Uh, nothing concerning now. Um, we still don't think there's increased uh, risk for unrest at the volcano. Um, Yesterday, we put out an information statement kind of comparing this current swarm to the, the other largest swarm that we've seen at Mount Rainier since the time we have started monitoring, which was in 2009. Um, so for some context, that swarm in 2009 lasted about three days. Um, it had about 120 earthquakes that were located. And one metric to use, um, just because the network has changed in the past 15 years, we have a lot more sensors or a lot more sensitive. Um, but we had in that swarm about 15 earthquakes that were greater than a magnitude one. Um, so that was something that we would have seen anything over a magnitude one back then. In contrast, today we're up near, I think it's over 60 earthquakes that are greater than a magnitude one. Um, and we have surpassed the, the three day mark. So we're just a little bit past that 2009 swarm, but we are seeing a lot more events. Um, so that was kind of our, our previous benchmark for what swarms at Mount Rainier could look like. But the other thing to keep in mind is that Mount Rainier has been a volcano for thousands of years, and we've only just been monitoring it for a few decades. Um, so this could be completely normal for Mount Rainier. It's just that it's different than what we've been seeing since we've started monitoring. It's because we have that technology now to actually understand what's happening there, because these aren't earthquakes really that you're feeling on the ground level, right? No, the largest earthquake actually happened just about an hour ago. It's a magnitude 2.4. Um, and so that's approaching what you could feel if it was really shallow and you were standing right on top of it. Um, but for the most part, like you can't feel any of these earthquakes. They're, they're pretty deep, um, even if you were standing right on top of it and standing completely still. And so still what, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, they're still, still pretty small earthquakes. And what was it? To, I know we talked about this before, but what is it that you think is causing these earthquakes since it's probably not magma? Yeah, no, so we don't think it's magma. Um, because Rainier is an active volcano, it last had an eruption about a thousand years ago, there's still hot material underneath, like deep underneath Mount Rainier. Um, and a lot of times, especially at volcanoes in the Cascades, where we have a lot of rain, we have a lot of glaciers, um, we have what's called hydrothermal fluids. So this is basically like water and gases that are moving in the cracks and pathways underneath Mount Rainier. And they can come into contact with that hot material that's deep down and it'll cause them to rise. And so right now we really think it's just um, the hydrothermal fluids moving underneath Mount Rainier. We're not seeing any indications that there's magma movement. And when we talk about the Cascades as a whole, I know that there are some earthquakes that happened on some of the other mountains throughout the Cascades. Does that have any relation to this of what's happening on Rainier? Or are those just separate events? No, so they're co completely unrelated. Um, pretty much every week we report on having earthquakes at a few of our different volcanoes, and that's all just part of background activity. Gotcha. So nothing to be concerned with at, the, at those other uh, mountains either? Nope, nothing to be concerned with anywhere in the Cascades. 
Okay, well, that is good to know. Uh, when it comes to this swarm itself, you know, now that we're a few days into it, um, mm -hmm. how long does it continue on before it does kind of change your perspective on what's happening? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the duration itself doesn't necessarily um, change our perspective because we are still declining. Over the past couple of days, the rate is slowly declining. It waxes and wanes a little bit, um, but it has not necessarily increased. Um, something that would be more concerning is if we started to see something in our other data sets, so such as the ground, um, the volcano starting to deform. So if we saw our GPS sensors moving, um, if we started to see increased gas emissions, something like that would be concerning. And the other thing that we can look at is that even though we just have seismic data right now or seismic unrest, we would be interested if the types of earthquakes and the types of data that we were seeing changed their characteristics and showed that it might be more magmatic in origin. But none of that has happened so far. Nope, none of that has happened so far. Um, we keep a really close eye on it. We've got our watch schedule already set for the weekend. Um, so we'll just keep an eye on it. All right. Well, Alex, you know, thank you as always. And, and I want to let everybody know too where they can go to follow along with all of this information that, that you all put out, which is really fantastic. Yeah, so if you go to the USGS website, we have what's called VNS. It's the Volcano Notification System. So you can sign up for those to get our, we've been putting out uh, daily status updates since our information statement on uh, Tuesday, just to give people information. Um, and you can also follow the USGS Volcano social media. We're on Facebook, um, X, and a few others, uh, Inst Instagram. So feel free to follow those. We've been putting out content at least once a day, um, updating people on the swarm. All right, thank you. As always, really appreciate your updates. And uh, if it continue on, continues on, I may hit you up next week for another update on, on what's Sounds going on. Sounds good. I'll right keep it eye. All right. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye, Greg. Bye. And for everybody watching, too, again, we are live here from the Foxville Oregon Newsroom. So plenty more coming up um, you know, throughout the afternoon. Between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m., this is when we're here. And I also want to remind you that if there's ever breaking news, this is the place to go as well. So that Foxville Oregon app. Uh, certainly something that you can, uh, I recommend downloading on whatever platform you're on or wherever you're watching us. There's going to be a Fox 12 Oregon app, and uh, that way you can get a notification, something's going on, or we're just going live with a segment like this. You'll get that, and uh, you can join in with us because we will bring you that information as soon as we get it. But that is it for right now. We're taking a quick break. I'll talk to you soon. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.